Hey yo, it is Carso and I'm back with Stuck in a Dream. I'm once again by myself and today I am talking about not only Deer and Fox, but I'm talking about the Sacramento Kings, my favorite team and just how well they've been playing these last 10 games basically. They had a six game streak. They went six and one in their last seven uh, until the loss against the 76ers. That's why the purples are that, that's that's purple right there. But I want to talk about how De'Aaron Fox has led this team. And Luke Walton's actually been coaching well. So I'll get straight into it. De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halberton are the pieces of the future. As much as I want Marvin Bagley there, if Monty McNair, the GM for the Sacramento Kings, finds another piece, like a John Collins maybe, just throwing that out there, I'll take that. But Tyrese Halberton and De'Aaron Fox, the Kings go as they go. First off, talk about Tyrese. He's in Rookie of the Year conversations with LaMelo Ball, although I don't think he'll win it because LaMelo Ball has the media coverage, House of Highlights, also called House of LaMelo Ball. Tyrese Halliburton is averaging 12 points. He's shooting amazing from the three-point, and when he catches that ball from maybe four feet behind the arc, I, I look at my dad and go, that's in. I, I don't care. I don't even have to see it. And it's so ugly, but it works. It's kind of like my jumper. You know, hey, as long as it goes in, don't mess with it. I don't think they should have messed with Lonzo Balls, maybe. But Tyrese is shooting 49% from the field. He's shooting over 45% from three. He ha- He's averaging five and a half assists almost. And this is all off of the bench. Just wait until we ship Buddy Heald out one of these days. Talking about Buddy Heald, he's still in a slump kind of. Shooting 37% from three. He's averaging 16 points. And although he's playing not well by the stats, when you look at his game, he he's actually playing really well. Just watching him and his defensive effort. And he he looks like a different type of player. He is more concentrated on the whole game, not just the offensive side. And when he has to, he will knock down shots. He's still shooting 86% from the free throw line. But talking about Buddy Heald, you have to talk about the two big men for the Kings. I mentioned Marvin Bagley earlier and Rashawn Holmes. When they start off that lineup, it looks really good together. And as much as I want Marvin Bagley to take that starting center position, because with the Kings offense, they have the center set all the screens and basically pass out of the top of the key. And I want Marvin Bagley to do that because... I feel the potential of Marvin Bagley is a lot higher than the potential of Rashawn Holmes. As good as Rashawn's playing, he's averaging almost 13 points per game, three assists, and almost five rebounds. But Marvin Bagley, if he can be that guy, he's a 20-10 and and four. And that's what I'm looking for. And with him at the four, he's not going to be able to showcase his full uh, talent. Although... Marvin Bagley from the uh, three-point percentage is looking nice. He's shooting 37% from three, one of the highest percents of his career. He's actually healthy. And what I told everybody was a healthy Marvin Bagley is a good Kings team. He's shooting 47% from the field, so he needs to bring that up a little. But he's averaging 12.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, almost an assist. The problem is he just can't play fourth quarter minutes because he doesn't play the best defense. But I really do like his defensive effort has increased over the years. And once Luke Walton trusts him in that last five minutes with Tyrese Halberton, Harrison Barnes, De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, Rashawn Holmes, it's over. When he takes that Rashawn Holmes spot, that's when we will see the growth of Marvin Bagley. So Luke Walton, he's actually been coaching well. In my last article, I, I mentioned like a hey, Alvin Gentry's there. And if we need to get rid of Luke Walton, I am ecstatic that Alvin Gentry is on the end of that bench. But Luke Walton's proved me wrong in these last couple of games. He's actually put out good lineups. So what I notice is he he's starting to trust De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton out there in the second quarter. Because for a long time, it was... Maybe you have Corey Joseph and Buddy Heald as your two guard. And neither of them can make a decision. Neither of them are primary ball handlers. They're both kind of two guards that can handle the ball, but you'd rather them not. 
So I definitely started to like Luke Walton's lineups throughout the game. Corey Joseph, not much to say. I, I don't really like his game. I thought we should have got rid of him. Uh, whenever, whenever his potential is at his highest, whenever his play is at its height, we need to get rid of him. As good as he is as a as a teammate, when he's your backup point guard, it's not going to end well. What I really like is they sent Robert Woodard and Jemias Ramsey down to the G League. They're ke- they're keeping Kyle Guy, and I really like that because Kyle Guy, I believe, can turn into that JJ Reddick esque player, where when he's in there, he can be a threat. But for some reason, when he's in there, he just doesn't knock down threes. He's shooting twenty eight percent from three, and we know Kyle Guy is a better player than that. We know he's a better shooter than that. Talking about Harrison Barnes, he's playing the best basketball of his career. A week ago, I said they need to get rid of him as right now, but I've noticed they've been looking at trades, maybe Boston, but I don't know what we would get from them. Maybe a pick and a young player. I know they took that guy out of Indiana last year who's supposed to be really good but just can't find minutes with the Celtics. I actually would have liked them maybe for a Dennis Smith, but you know if they stick with Harrison Barnes the rest of the season, I won't be mad. De'Aaron Fox, let's talk about it. De'Aaron Fox, he won player of the month, averaged over 30 in January, and he looked like a like the player we drafted. Like the player that we all wanted, he has become. Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum took that step in their rookie year, and De'Aaron Fox started on a really bad team. Really, really bad. You know, when Zach Randolph at 400 years old is your starting power forward. There's going to be some problems. He has a couple turnovers, but when you're the primary ball handler, you're going to have those turnovers. He's shooting one of the highest percents from three of his career, which is amazing. And I can't ask for any... Okay, I can't ask for something better from... He needs to bring that free throw percentage up. He's shooting 68% from three. I mean, free throw line. And it needs to be better than that because... He is the primary ball handler, and when you had you when you had the ball in your hands, you are going to get fouled. And if you can't knock down free throws, you're you're going to be limited in that fourth quarter. But in the fourth quarter, he's taking over. He's averaging 23 and a half points, the most of his career. No one could guard him. I know the 76ers played him pretty well in that second half, but mind you, he had like 30 in the first half. So they put Matisse Thibel on him and He went 3 for 13 after that, but I don't blame him. The Kings weren't knocking down shots when he was passing to them. And without them knocking down shots, the paint isn't as open. So Joel Embiid and Matisse Thibel can guard him. And when you have two elite defenders, it's going to be tough. The Kings struggled against the 76ers, but I don't blame them. Their shortest guy's like 6'4", and that's Seth Curry who plays the two. So Buddy Heald has that matchup. When you have a 6'9 power forward slash point guard and Ben Simmons when our starting center is only 6'9", there's going to be some issues. They played Joel Embiid pretty well, and Marvin Bagley took a majority of those minutes against Embiid, and he played and he played them straight up, played them well, and the Sacramento Kings look like the team that may make the playoffs. They are 10th in the West right now, two games ahead of the Mavericks, and only they're tied with the Grizzlies, and they're a game behind the Warriors. There's There was a loss earlier in the season to the Warriors that should never have happened. But if they play these Grizzlies this Sunday, I'm really excited for that game. We got De'Aaron Fox versus John Morant. Jaron Jackson still out, so the Kings may benefit off of a couple of misfortunate injuries. From a couple teams. They play the Magic tomorrow. So I'm pretty excited for that game. The Kings have a... They they need to get a win out of, out of Orlando. I believe they play at home. If I'm not mistaken. They play at home. Against the Magic. That is a 7 o'clock start. And I'm super excited for that game. Because the Sacramento Kings might get another dub. They'll be tied with the Warriors. Imagine if the Kings made the playoffs over the Warriors. As a Sacramento Kings fan, I'm excited. If you're a Sacramento Kings fan, please 
hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. If you're an NBA fan, check out my other content. I drop a lot of content on all platforms, Instagram, CarsonCook.talks, YouTube, Cook Talks, and Apple, Spotify, Podcasts, Stuck in a Dream. It is Carso, and I am out.